So my name is Linda Reinstein, and I'm not a lobbyist, a doctor, or an attorney. I'm a mesothelioma widow. That's a photograph of my husband um, just about six months before he passed away. Uh, Alan had both occupational and environmental exposure. These are preventable diseases, as Dr. Lemon and Dr. Castleman have shared with you. Mesothelioma uh, attacked my husband's left lung. He surgically had a left rib removed, his left lung resected, his pericardium stripped, and his diaphragm surgically replaced. Surgically replaced. All for more time with our then daughter, who was just 10. Alan lost a three-year battle in 2006, but we're not giving up. We've been coming to Congress for nine and a half years now, and we have discussions with members and staffers just like all of you. And our, sim our message is simple. These are all preventable diseases, and we can do something about it, and we should. This slide we had developed by scientists. If you look under President Lincoln's nose, you'll see 20,000 asbestos fibers. Just imagine, you can't see them, taste them, touch them, and smell them. They're compared to human hair and grains of rice. So when we talk about safe level exposure and, and these magic minerals, I want you to recognize how small they are. This slide makes it very simple. We know asbestos, two things. Asbestos is a known human carcinogen, and there's no safe level exposure. Yet, in the United States of America, exposure continues. As Dr. Kausman pointed out, USGS gives us reporting data, and we, have, we, we collect it and we also disperse it on the internet to keep education alive. And did you know that we, the United States, actually imports asbestos, a known carcinogen? We imported 1,000 tons this last year. And why? That's what my interns ask. Why, Linda? To meet manufacturing needs is what USGS tells us. There's something wrong with that. The good news about these presentations, just so you know, if you're typing quickly, we've made a resource page for all of you, so you can actually get our PowerPoints, the documents that we're referencing during this, this uh briefing, um, and I'll make mention exactly to the URL. Um, I want you to think about environmental exposure. What is that? Well, on the far left side, you can see Joplin, Missouri. Was it not hard enough that a tornado ravaged that city? But then 2,600 tons of asbestos debris was removed by people just like us. Not, not licensed, not wearing respiratory protection, 2,600 tons. But if we look on the far right side, we talk about natural and man-made. Libby, Montana is an excellent example of a man-made disaster. They mined vermiculite, which was contaminated with asbestos. This town of Libby, Montana is a toxic dump. They cannot clean the asbestos out of Montana well enough, although Congress remains engaged and funds efforts to do that. Once these minute airborne fibers are airborne and dispersed, it's like a pillow. How can you ever collect feathers when the pillow breaks open? These invisible fibers remain, remain airborne and cause huge problems. But for me, it's really it's, it's about the workers. We know we have OSHA regulations and, and, and all kinds of protection and breathing equipment, but workers don't always know. And this happened right underneath the steps of the Capitol. These 10 workers were working underneath the tunnels, keeping those offices that you work in hot in the winter and cool in the summer. The asbestos was so thick, if you look up to the far right side, one of the tunnel workers could actually write his name John. He wrote his name on top of asbestos. That thick. Next. Well, it's sad, but many new patients um, are actually young women, and they've never worked around asbestos. It was once thought that Doug's father-in-law and my husband were the average kind of patient in their 60s that were diagnosed, but that's not the case. Heather's a great example. She's just 45, and her baby is five years old. She's also had an EPP like the surgery my husband had. We know that the numbers are large. Over 10,000 people, Americans die every year. But I want you to think about this environment and occupational exposure and consumer. So what does ADO do about it? We hold staff briefings. We work with congressional leaders. We do educational campaigns. And we're very grateful for all of you who can come and share this news with your members. I want to take a minute. It's great with social media now, because I can put an ask out through Twitter or Facebook. Um, does anybody have any new products they'd like us to share? Because that's a common question that I get with an ADAO. Is, Linda, how do I know where asbestos is? What do I do when I find it? And what consumer products might be contaminated? Those are all excellent questions. But unless you're a specialist, like Brent, who will talk about it, you can't test in your home. You don't know. And packages aren't marked. This is very concerning to me. A scientist that we work with in South Carolina actually sent me this. 
um, he commented that, hey, Linda, I just got um, an asbestos mitten in, with my furnace. And I thought he was just kind of yanking my noodle. No, it's 90% chrysotile. This asbestos mitten was included in a high degree furnace to be used to hopefully move the contents around. There's no marking, and, and it's double bagged, but you can actually see the asbestos loose fibers in, this, um, in the Ziploc bag. Now, as consumers, how do you know what's contaminated? And can we do something? Absolutely. We can follow the other 55 countries around the world that have indeed banned asbestos. But until we have a ban, we're going to deal with more consumer product contamination, environmental and occupational exposure, and disease and death will continue. We have a really special woman here today, and this is her first trip to Washington, D.C. Mrs. Barbara McQueen is going to share her story. But what people like Barbara are doing are they're using their voice. And in Barbara's new book that's actually on the table, I asked Barbara if she'd be interested in putting in a, a page of awareness in her new book about Steve McQueen and their life. And she has. And on the back of your handout, you'll see the article that's in Mrs. McQueen's book. And it says mesothelioma, can't pronounce it, can't cure it. And we're hoping that we can continue to raise awareness with efforts like this. Um, at the end of uh, the presentation, I would I'd like you all to grab my business card because it will make it very easy for you to find your resource page. When you do go to our website, if you just look for, look for DC, just the two letters on the horizontal toolbar, all the resources that we've used today and referenced will be available to you and your boss. So at this time, I'd like to invite Brent to come forward. And then